Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen. And before we get on to today's video, just a reminder of how you can support the channel. Please subscribe, please leave comments on all the videos because that really does help. But if you want to support the channel uh, further, there is a donation page. Please go to buy me a coffee and leave a donation, which is always fantastically helpful. Keeps the channel keeps the channel moving and allows me to make all of this fresh material. But if you want a textbook that contains all the good stuff from the videos, please click on the link and buy, drink tea and read the paper from lulu.com. All of these things really help the channel. Thank you to all the people that continue to buy this textbook. It really is fantastically helpful. Now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to the latest video and in this video newsletter what we're going to be looking at is some details of how to conduct an MSA correctly. Now I'm not going through the MSA process, I'm dealing with some important points about measurement system analysis. So we're going to be looking at, you might call it gauge R&R, &R, is the technique we're going to be looking at, measurement, system, analysis, and we'll just call them important points. Now this follows from a an email that I received by a viewer who's sent me a question about his, his MSA. And he sent me two questions. And he said, number one, should I round up? Should I round up? So what he's got, he's got an, an additional decimal place, one more decimal place than the tolerance that he has. And he wants to know whether that's a bit too, being a bit too anal, a bit too specific. Should he cut it off and just ignore the last decimal place? And the other question is, should he select defects? He actually says, it's, a, it's actually out of tolerance parts. He doesn't say defects. What he's actually suggesting <clears throat> is that he actually measures something quite a bit bigger than what the, the tolerance is aiming for uh, because he's been told he's got to include defects in the MSA. <clears throat> so let's answer these two questions. Well, in both cases, the answer is no. Should you round up? No. If you remove decimal places, removing decimals makes things worse. And in fact, the advice is you should always have one more decimal than the tolerance. So in other words, if you are measuring hundredths of a mil, that's your tolerance, your measurement system should have an extra place on there and it should measure thousands of a millimeter. That's really important. That helps to get good R&R. &R. Then this question, should he select defects or out of tolerance? Well, the answer here is no. What the measurement test is doing, what the gauge R&R &R is doing, is it's asking the question, is your measurement system capable of seeing difference for the group of data that your manufacturing process is producing? So what you should do, you should randomly
select 10 pieces and this is most important randomly so what you're going to do your manufacturing process is producing this now this might be a capable process might have no defects in it so it might look like this what what you're asking the question is is my measurement system capable of seeing different size along that scale so if that's what your your manufacturing system creates if you randomly select out of that that's what your measurement system will be measured against and that's what your measurement system should be measured against if you deliberately start creating parts out here to create defects you will completely ruin the validity of the MSA the MSA is measured against the, the process that it's it's working with and of course one of the problems that you see over time if you get good at improving your process and you drive the variability in the more you drive the variability in the more likely it is that your MSAs will start to fail on a regular basis now that isn't because your MSA your measurement system is poor it is because your manufacturing system is getting better and better so there is a point where your your MSAs will fail but you will still say the measurement system is okay to be used because what it can still see it will still see the process beginning to wander backwards and forwards it will t still tell you the change is happening it's just not very good at picking out the specific size at a specific moment but there's there's the answer to two really important details please don't round up that's one of the worst behaviors ever if it's measured you write it down you never ever drop data never let the computer do that later if it wants to but always collect all the decimal places and the other one always randomly select from the manufacturing process that the measurement system is being used on because that is what the measurement system analysis is doing you are you are you are measuring it against the task that you're trying to conduct. Please select the parts randomly, otherwise you ruin the result. It's no longer valid if you start offering up random, out of tolerance results. There is your measurement system advice, folks. Please use your measurement systems wisely, your measurement system analysis wisely. Don't panic about bad results use your common sense and if you use your common sense you'll stop yourself spending bucket loads of cash that really isn't necessary and if you need any advice please drop me a line i'm more than happy to help you with any msa results that are confounding you